Have you ever heard about ChatGPT plugins? Of course you have, but did you know that OpenAI just supercharged their API with new function feature? Imagine this, building your own very ChatGPT directly in Airtable. Sounds cool, isn't it? What if you could pull the latest data right into Airtable or even use it to query Airtable data itself? Well, you're in the right place, stick around and in the next few minutes I will show you exactly how I've done it. Let's dive in. Hi, this is Greg from Business Automated and today I'll show you how to use Airtable to build your own chat GPT with function calls. And I have to admit straight away that using Airtable UI for building a chat, it's a little bit of a stretch, but at least it's a good way to show you how you can interact with OpenAI API and how you can use function calls. And maybe this could be a useful base for you to use in your project. So as you will see, I have received a typical response from ChatGPT, what you would expect, but now let's ask it for some current information. And as you will know, ChatGPT due to the learning cutoff should not be able to have access to this information, what is the weather right now. And this is where the function calls come in. So those strange additional informations that are being re returned from assistant, not as a regular content, but as a function call, it is exactly what triggers function to return temperature and provide data to OpenAI to give us up-to-date response. But how does ChatGPT know which function to call? So as you will see, all rows over here are grouped by a chat ID. And in the first column, I have a list of chats with functions that are available to them. So for example, to this one, I have connected get weather functions. The functions are described in more details over here and their parameters and the required parameters as well as descriptions are described in more details over here together with the URL which should be called for that information. I will not be going into details of this table just to simplify it but you'll be able to download this and play around with this table. The main point is here that the moment when you press submit button we are triggering an automation which makes a webhook request to a URL on make.com that we have set up with a specific scenario. And as you can see, this scenario is being executed right now. The first part contains gathering information from Airtable and passing them over to a module which makes a request to the API. And this is a custom module because in this case, we are also adding the function description, what sort of functions are available for this particular module. And if there is a need for the function to be called, we are executing this additional branch over here that will allow us to call specific URLs with the details of that function. So whatever information OpenAI wanted to include inside of their, their call, as you will see this right here with the arguments, all of that is being passed over to this specific URL and the response is being saved back into our chat over here. And by the way, for the weather, I have just built a short custom scenario which returns up-to-date weather from main.com. I will include this scenario and all the other scenarios in the link to the description below so that you can play around it with it yourself. Um, so I will, will not be going through the details how this is built in this stage, uh, but I'll just show you how this can be used. So in this case, we have also added additional functionality which is called get search results. So we included two functions. So we can ask both for weather, but we can also ask it to search internet for a specific question. So in this case, I have asked it a bit unusual questions that it would likely use internet to search for. And as you will see, we have a made we have made a search request which right now has returned us a list of blogs that are relevant and we will see this in a second in the response and we have received a response which includes a list of top five places to spend a rainy day in Tokyo and as you will see we have a list of relevant blogs this is coming from a search and the search function is actually another custom scenario that I have built. It is basically taking some of the 
request and passing it to another API and simplifying the response not to exceed the context limit for the searching of the internet. I am using SERP API, which allows you to query Google, Bing, and all the other search engines to get information from them, to get shopping information, regular pages, any information that you can search from Google. So it's highly customizable. You can check out more and serp And here it's a, here you can also download this scenario, which I'm using to kind of simplify the execution. So this way we're able to search the internet and get up to date information based on your queries. Now let's move over to the third use case. In this use case, we are actually going to be querying only our internal data. So for chat number three, we have connected a different function, which is get product reviews from Airtable. And as you will see over here, I have a list of mockup reviews loaded directly to Airtable. And for querying this, this table, I have also created a custom Airtable API which is pretty much passing over Airtable API and returning us the responses. This is why we can also get for this specific Airtable function, we can get a simple URL that only accepts those parameters and less data. So this is basically simplification of the whole Airtable API. What we will do right now, we will ask, what do people say about our products? And you will see that it is making a request to the function where it is asking for a maximum 20 records because that's also the limit that I have set. And it's asking for only specific fields like reviews and product bot. And you will see that we also have received the response from Airtable API over here. And as next step, we are getting a nice summary about what are some of the reviews about our products and they have listed only the first reviews, but we could also ask it if we modify the first query, we could also ask it a little bit more complicated question, like what are the positive features of the top rated products? And as you will see, now the function is a little bit more complicated. So first of all, it has asked for the sort and sorted the products based on the ratings. And here we have a nice summary that basically tells us what are the great features of the best products, also listing the users that bought them and so on. And it also gives us a nice summary uh, of all those reviews. So as you see, it's a very exciting way how to get information from Airtable. The downside is a little bit that here on this specific function, I have on purpose limited the number of records not to get too much information from Airtable. Otherwise, you will reach the limits of the OpenAI and API context and so on. So if we if we would retrieve too many records, it would cause an error in the API because of providing too many information. And you also see the summary of all the reviews over here and you also see what kind of parameters it is sending for the request. It is sorting it based on the least popular records and then summarizing the response. What are the, the worst issues for each of the products? Right, so this is a very short overview of how you could call functions inside of Airtable. And as you will see, this is quite complicated base because we are combining multiple uh, parameters over here for each of the functions and having quite a few transformations to get JSON formats so that we can describe those functions. I have not tested every possible conversion option. So some things might might not work. So bear this bear this in mind. But I think it's an interesting demo for for you to see how it is possible to incorporate some of the function calling inside of your Airtable workflows. And I will I will attach the link to this base and to those scenarios so that you can play around and kind of modify them and experiment on your own. And hopefully that would be a good inspiration for you guys to, to include this in your business and your workflows. So I hope this was useful for you guys and do please let me know your comments, what you think, would you like to get a more detailed walkthrough through all the elements that are included in the make scenario 
and as always please do uh, like and subscribe it helps the channel out and thank you very much guys and i will talk to you in the next one bye